see these operators are somewhat that we have to understand we have uh this kind of uh, screen the laser pointer okay you see here this this is a unary operator we have this uh, you know plus minus this exclamation and this tilde operator this one so unary means only one operand will be there with this uh, one operand will be there we will see subsequently in uh, subsequent slides uh, with examples the usage of this we will see and we have this multiply for that we use this asterisk and then uh, we have this uh, you know slash forward slash this is for uh, divide and uh, there is uh, this percentage uh, kind of thing for that is modulus this divide will result into quotient and this will result into remainder so we have this uh, you know add and subtract wherein we need uh, you know two operands here and uh, for subtract also two operands even for this multiply divide modulus all this we need two operands here and then we have this shift operator this is for left shift and this is for right shift. The usage we will see subsequent uh, slides. But for now, you have to understand these are the operators for, uh, you know, anything that we wanted to perform the left shift. This is less than, less than kind of thing. And um, greater than, greater than, double greater if you use, that is for right shift. And there is a relational operator. In this relational operator, we have this less than and less than are equal to greater than, greater than are equal to. Equality check operators are here, double equal. So we use uh, double equal here uh, uh, instead, uh, you know, uh, here that what you are seeing here is this is double equal and here you are seeing triple equal. This is for case uh, case checking. Case checking means like uh, in a very large HDL, we have four logic values. We have zero, we have one, and uh, just a minute, I'll take, I think, uh, pen is good to take. We have this uh, X, and we have this Z. This is for logic zero, this is for logic one, and this is for unknown, and this is for high impedance. So you are, let's say you have some four bits. So this four, among these four bits, you have uh, something like this. Two bits are like this, zero, one, and two bits are X and Z. And there is another operand. Let's say this operand name is A, and this operand is B. This also has got four bits. But here bits are uh, somewhat like this. So now you wanted to perform this, whether A is equal to B, you cannot use this operator. You cannot use this operator. This double equal is there, now That you cannot use. So in case any such, uh, you know, contents are there in the oper uh, this uh, operand, operand, then you have to use this triple equal. So that is what this uh, equality here is. And this is for uh, checking for not equal. Uh, such such operands, if such operands are there. So whether A is not equal, we cannot use this one. This one is exclusively used when, uh, you know, we are quite sure that our operand is not going to have any uh, X or Z contents. It is going to have some known values only. In that case, is we can use a uh, whether a is not equal to b this can be used so where uh, wherein we are quite sure that our operand gonna have uh, something like x and z uh, in that case uh, we cannot use this one we have to use whether a is not equal to b this exclamation and this double equal that's how it is so we'll see that, uh, uh, you know, as time progresses, several things we have to do. So at that time, the usage, when it comes, you will understand. But for now, you must possess this, uh, you know, uh, operator's knowledge. So that's, uh, that's the uh, agenda today. And then the, we have something called reduction. So this uh, reduction, uh, 
is clear here first. So we have reduction operators here. Uh, this is a reduction and this is for reduction and. Reduction means uh, if you have something like this. So we, this is, uh, you know, uh, we can use like this and A. If you use and A like this, or if you use uh, this, uh, you know, trilled operator and then ampersand uh, like this, and then if you put uh, A, then yes, this is the NAND reduction, and this is AND reduction. So it is like this is ANDed with this one, and the, that result is ANDed with this one, and that result is ANDed with this one. In case of NAND, this is nanded with the this is nanded with this one and that result is nanded with this one and that result is na nand this nanded means uh, i'm saying this nand add and add. this is this is how i'm spelling so nanded or anded like that and this is for xor and this is for x naught so anything uh, that you wanted to uh, uh, there is a need arised wherein you wanted to perform uh, you know, uh, reduction like uh, yeah, by doing this XOR operation. So there you know, it will be like you can put here uh, this op operator and then put your operand like that. So then you will be performing XOR, uh, you know, uh, XOR uh, reduction. So that's how these uh, reduction operators are, uh, you know, uh, used. And this what Vertical bar. This vertical bar that you are seeing is for R operation. So this is the uh, R reduction, and this is NOR. For NOR, we use this one. Whereas if you see this logical operator, we have this uh, double ampersand and double vertical bar. So this uh, this is like uh, we say, now that condition and this condition two must be fulfilled. Uh, is A greater than three and uh, is B less than two, like both must be meeting. So both conditions must be uh, satisfied. So that is the logical. And that is the logical or so like same example, if you take A is A greater than three or when B is less than two, in that case, you wanted to perform some things, let's say. So in that case, you use this uh, logical or. So that's how uh, these are. Uh, and then uh, this we already had seen last session if you remember uh, we had used this one conditional operator or this is also called ternary operator so if you are remembering this uh, last session we already had done so nothing much uh, to talk about that next is uh, as i t uh, told here we have this uh, you know uh, arithmetic uh, operators here the usage uh, you know, further here elaborated here, all these, uh, you know, add, subtract, and then this multiply, divide, and modulus. So all these are uh, listed. And additionally, here we have uh, this one, uh, you know, power exponent. Also, you can see here uh, this one. So all these require these arithmetic uh, operators. Two operands are compulsory. Here you can see that is what we have listed here. Uh, this operands been listed like that. So what uh, it it is it is uh, com, you know conveying that you, whenever you use this this particular thing <laughs> that is asterisk, then you need uh, a and b like one and two. These two operands are required. So that's how it is. Nothing much here. We'll see that further uh, in uh, you know somewhere uh, in the examples. Uh, but the point here uh, to remember here is this point is required when we try to code anything. If any operand bit has a value x, x, then the result of the entire expression is x. So uh, that is because um, like uh, you have got, uh, let's say one x, uh, zero, one, and the b is, uh, let's say two. Now you are trying to, maybe you are trying to multiply or you are trying to uh, divide whatever that you wanted to do here. But since one one uh, one bit of this uh, operand is having the X, 
So the complete uh, result will be X unknown. So that that's how it is. And then, uh, so coming to this uh, unary operator here, uh, it will be like uh, storing in a two's complement form. Internally, it is going to store anything like uh, you may be assigning like let's say a equal to minus two then how is that it is going to store inside uh, uh, the memory is it's a two's complement form minus two two's complement form so that's how it is and we also had seen uh, here um, this uh, base system we talked about that no but there any thing here then we have this uh, logical here. Logical, we uh, just now we had seen this too. And we also have this logical negation. So logical negation requires only one uh, operate, operand. Whereas uh, these two require two operand. And then uh, relational operator we had seen greater than, uh, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So that we have seen, all these require two operands. That is obvious again. And in equality also, we have seen all this, like, you know, double equal also we talked about and triple equal also we have talked. And exclamation not uh, equal, this exclamation and equal, uh, equal is for not equal to. And this is for case not equal to, case inequality operator. We say case inequality, inequality operator means th these are those operators. So that is how it is. Um, next is uh, here anything that is important. Some conditions are there here. Let us talk about that. The knowledge of that conditions is uh, required. Logical operators follow these conditions so what is the first condition that we are seeing logical operators always evaluate to one bit value maybe zero or maybe one one means true uh zero means false or it also can it also can evaluate to x x means unknown so that is one thing uh, any, any, at any point of time, if you have any doubt, you please uh, stop me, ask me. Now, the second, second is if, if an operand is not equal to zero, it is equal to logical one, true condition. If it is equal to zero, it is equal to a logical zero. That is quite obvious. So, this one is equal to true condition this zero is equal to this false condition that is quite obvious nothing much there and then this one if you see logical operators take variables or expressions as operand so that is like uh, you know this is I told already somebody post, uh, posting maybe uh, they had to uh, just a minute I had to pause. Now please ask your doubt. Yes, sir. In output, sometimes we get the Z value, you know, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. What is that value? Is it either one or zero, or is it like undefined? Or... Ah, that is a high impedance. High impedance value. When our logic properly, we have not uh, like uh, it is like. Uh, uh, let's say you have this uh, buffer. Buffer has got one control here. Buffer logic is simply uh, it has to pass. It has to pass whatever you give, you are giving A, and then A will be passed. A may be logic 0, A may be logic 1. So whatever you have given, logic 0 or logic 1 will be seen the other side. This is if you are calling it as a V in, 
and what is v out means whatever we give at the v inside that is seen on the v out that is the purpose of this buffer buffer applications are different our, our current agenda is not to talk about the buffer applications rather to understand that high what is high impedance value so now let's say somehow i uh, i i am keeping one control here when control here uh, this is control this is control so when control is the here in this case zero, then it, it permits here, whatever you give here, like one if you are giving, that one is in zero if you are giving, zero is in. This is known value. This is called known value for us. But uh, what if, if we give uh, something like, uh, you know, basically here, uh, uh, if, if you talk about uh, even these values, you have some division like this. You have, let's say, 0 to 5 volts. 0 to, let's say, 2 volts, any voltage that comes here, that is completely called as a logic 0. And let's say this is 3 to 5. Anything that uh, fluctuates here, that is uh, termed as a logic 1. But anything comes between this is unknown here. That is not high impedance. That is not high impedance. That is unknown value. We don't know whether it's logic zero or logic one. So the, those scenarios are different. They, they occur uh, so for some reason that we'll discuss in subsequent classes. But for now, what if uh, here this is totally been disconnected here? Um, buffer imagine as a as a wire. Buffer just imagine instead of this symbol like putting this this kind of symbol buffer. Imagine this is wire. Uh, why I'm calling wire? Because at this end of the wire, if you are giving one, one is seen the other end. If you are giving zero, the other end, zero is seen. That's how the net net or wire uh, is acting, helping us. But what if I put a switch here and uh, you, uh, it is not, it is opened here. When it is closed, when it is closed, okay, whatever one you give, one is seen. Whatever zero is uh, given, that zero is seen. But uh, I am opening this switch here. Now I am not connecting. This switch is not connected. This switch is not connected. This switch is not connected. This switch is opened here. So it is open means like this. Yeah, you have this way of uh, you know. Uh, scenario. Now, what is the value? This this value is what is this value? Can we define it as a, a logic one? Can we define as a logic zero? Can we define it as a unknown value? So, how do we actually put this one in uh, in um, you know how do we describe it to them in real time? What it is in real time? What it is? If you disconnect why this is nothing here. The, you know here this say this this we are calling it as a high impedance nothing is passing nothing is passing that is a high impedance what is uh, logic one some voltage value maybe uh, between three to five uh, just now what we have discussed here logic uh, one what is this logic zero some voltage value but when we are not uh, uh, in a state to pass any voltage or current here what it is then how do we describe it that is this this is having high impedance like really you take one wire copper wire at home and uh, if you connect one battery uh, uh, that uh, you know we have so 5 volts battery or 2 volts battery like this if you hold here what happens here you experience some heat so now what happens if you disconnect this uh, copper wire you are disconnected here nothing is there not disconnected uh, your battery is still connected your battery is still connected, but now you have disconnected it. Now, this is how we call. What is that in in the physical world? What is that? This current cannot jump from this point to this point here. Cannot jump that. We are defining it as a high impedance state. What it is means high impedance state. Physically, how we are defining it in the physical world, in real world, how we are defining a copper wire connected like this, like this, but here no connection. In physically, like a real uh, scenario, what we call it, this is having high impedance. Why we are saying high impedance? Because the current that is uh, uh, like, uh, let's say, you know, uh, minus and plus, 
conventional is like to show like plus two minus this way, but in fact, actually minus two plus only electrons are going that way. But let's say the way we are, uh, you know, conventional way like plus two minus, but they cannot jump here. Current cannot jump uh, this disconnected area. That is the thing that we are, we have to say humans have to say something. That's that something is high impedance it is. So that is what this Z is uh, we are defining in the software, how we are de defining that is Z. Somewhere disconnected, uh, that is high impedance. Some, something is not passing there, but something is passing. Something is passing. We don't know whether it is uh, logic zero or logic one, but there, there is something passing, definitely something passing. So that is not in the defined area by humans. We humans have cleverly defined why you call this one as a logic one. That is some voltage and you call it as logic zero. This one and zeros actually are some voltage levels. And anything that comes here is a, is, is not valid one. It's not treated the system. The system you may design uh, tomorrow, but for now that is not uh, uh, usable usable voltage we don't use it so that is called unknown it means uh, there is a connection but connection is still is there connection is still is there but what level of voltage that is there that we don't know making sense little uh, or, uh, at least little sense yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, that little sense if you're making from there on, you have to further explore, further understand, and you also have to help me tomorrow. Uh, sir, I understood in a better way. You um, you, you also please listen. Like that also you have to share. That is what this, the whole whole agenda of our assembly is that, that. Knowledge sharing. Anyway, that's what here. That's why we said that Verilog has got four logic levels. That's why we said Verilog has got four logic levels. One is zero the other is one the other is x the other is z x we are calling it as a unknown but z we are calling it as a high impedance and this one we are calling it as a logic one and this zero one called as a logic zero logic zero we are quite sure logic one we are quite sure unknown we are not sure but there is a connection there is a some connection but we are not sure what it is uh, like that. But high impedance means there is no connection at all. It is uh, it is hanging. It is uh, it is just hanging. It is uh, you know uh, open open. Uh, it is open. That there is no connection. It is open. That is what high impedance is. So what it is said here: logical operators take variables or expressions. They can take like, uh, you know, uh, variables like A greater than B. A is a variable, B is a variable. So you may have some expression, maybe, um, you know, your AX or B. Uh, let's say this is kind of expression, Boolean expression uh, is uh, greater than, uh, maybe the, some some need arises, let's say, some need arises to do this uh, this kind of thing uh c or with a d so you have kept in parenthesis and this also you have kept in parenthesis now <laughs> this is the expression this is the expression so uh, that kind of thing that is so uh, basically here just a minute this needs to be a little bit adjusted here okay. is that making sense this one yes sir so use of parenthesis to group logical operations is highly recommended to improve readability. Also, the user doesn't uh, have to remember the precedence of operator. That's why this 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 parenthesis is kept like that. Anyway, that, if that's clear, we'll move ahead. If uh, anyone having doubt, please uh, you stay unmuted. Anyway, you are unmuted state only. You please just uh, straight away on, uh, ask your doubt. Okay, so. Uh, this is again those examples, but we'll understand in a better way while we do. Uh, let's not get into the theoretical stuff. Theoretical stuff always you can study from the book or from the Google or any source. Uh, this is logical that we already had seen this logical. And then here. Um,
these are the examples here but we'll do it uh, while we do it uh, here bitwise also i have discussed this one. with some noise background uh, very quickly you go in uh, muted state when you require you unmute and then ask uh, because we are doing recording here um, and then okay now we are coming to this uh, bitwise uh, and bitwise me <laughs> bitwise uh, see uh, here one thing very important here <laughs> most of the uh, beginners will have this uh, doubt even i was having they seem to be same here here we have this and here also we have this and and uh, here we have this vertical bar here also we have vertical bar here we have this XOR, here also we have this XOR. Here we have this XOR operator that is, uh, one is caret symbol and the tilde. The two together they come, see uh, how this XNOR is. XNOR is this caret symbol and this uh, tilde symbol. They come together. They can come in any order, like first maybe tilde, then caret symbol or first uh, uh, caret symbol then tilde in any order, but that is representing X naught. So what is my point here is, <laughs> as you are seeing this one here, you have this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They are same in reduction and bitwise also. There where the confusion rises to the beginner. And then what is the difference? The difference is here, I'll clear this. The difference is this. You can note here, uh, all this uh, reduction will have one operand. Reduction will have one operand. You will see, you will not see uh, two operands. Two operands you will not see. If you are seeing two operands, that is a bitwise, except this, uh, uh, you know, bitwise, uh, bitwise negation, except that. You will you will see all uh, this bitwise have got this uh, two operands, but all of the redu reduction uh, they have got uh, one one of op one operand, and uh, this negation is not uh, <laughs> here in the reduction. In the reduction uh, here uh, throughout this reduction operators, you don't have this negation. So that's how we have to understand and you have to rem remember bitwise. What it does is. Uh, as I told, uh, you know, uh, it is having two operands. Let's say this is A and we have B. Uh, let's say here uh, B. And uh, here you perform maybe AND, maybe R, maybe X or maybe X. No. That's how th this is. A and B will be here like this. Whereas in case of <laughs> reduction, you will not have like this A and B in between the operator, no, only one side, first uh, first uh, operator and then operand, like that. So if that, that is there means, that is re reduction, reduction operator. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So whenever need arises, uh, uh, at that time only we will under, uh, understand the importance of this. So for now, you just pay attention. So for now, you have to understand the usage, how we use them. Uh, but uh, where the need arises, that is different thing. But the usage is, is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now coming to here, bitwise operator perform bitwise. <laughs> uh, what is important here that I am just seeing here. Take one corresponding. Uh, this is somewhat uh, seem to be important. This one, if one operand is shorter than the other, it will be bit extended with zeros to match the length of the longer operand. That is important. So uh, one having like this, the other having like this. This is let's say A. This is let's say B. Then you wanted to perform this uh, bitwise operation. Then uh, this this applies here bit extended with zeros to match the length means all left hand side will be bits will be appended to match this this one so that is what the uh, thing there and uh, 
your yes yeah, this is also important here yes yeah, z is treated as an x in bitwise operator if you have high impedance then that is treated as unknown so then this we already seen this the exception is uh, this one which takes uh, only one operand and operates on the bits this already we have seen <laughs> and uh, that's all here and uh, here this is the table that we have to remember for example uh, one operand has got uh, x the other has got zero so what is that you get so since you are performing the and operation in and it is already we, we have learned that in digital electronics if one input is zero with irrespective of the other its output will be zero that's the reason why the true table is having the zero here but when it is one then only it is unknown because because uh, the reason one input one input is x the other is one in that case the result cannot be known value it is still unknown value so that's how this uh, all these tables are here so this table uh, remembrance is also important uh, understanding uh, then, uh, <coughs> here this is important here reduction operator the end result will be one bit result that is quite obvious because uh, you know you have this kind of thing you, and you are performing reduction uh, these are the reduction operators so you will end up having uh, you know maybe one or zero at the end of the reduction of uh, this operation but what is important here is this is important here reduction operators work bit bit by bit bit by bit from right to left from right to left or you can remember from <laughs> lsb to msb anyone having any doubt and uh, then somebody uh, can go okay so the, that's how it is this you have to remember uh, how it is done? Reduction uh, reduction is done from LSP towards the MSB, from, from right to left. Uh, uh, see, if it is there here like this, it cannot go this way. This one, then this result is done with this one, and this result is done with this one. What you are basically doing, you are going from left to right here, if you do that way. But how it is performing compiler? From, from, right to left so kindly remember this one from right to left <laughs> in reduction so uh, how do you remember this very simple uh, here uh, this is how you have to remember whenever you feel, uh, come across any reduction operator like this or uh, like this so since it is a reduction operator r r so it is starting with r now right to left R reduction operator how it performs right to left making sense yes sir so that's how you remember that is not as any standard logic that's how we remember just until okay then uh, we will come to this uh, final uh, this one shift operators here if you see this one this is the right shift operator. How many two, two operands are required? Left shift again to arithmetic shift right, two operators. See the operator here. In a normal right shift, we have two uh, greater than, greater than. Whereas in uh, arithmetic right shift, we have two, three greater than, greater than, greater than. So this is uh, something we have to discuss. I think I have examples here. Uh, but uh, I'll take up here. Just clear this one. Uh, see, in a, here, you have 1, 0, 1, 1, for example. You are using this greater than, greater than 2. So, telling that to the compiler, perform 2 times right shift. 
So if you perform two times right shift, this one will be uh, like going to the right discarded and this will be discarded and this zero one will be occupied here, their position, this one, one position. What comes here is zero, zero comes here. That's how right shift is. Whereas arithmetic right shift, when you uh, have the same thing, but you are performing arithmetic right shift, in that case, this zero anyway will come here. This one anyway will come here. But the vacant positions are filled with whatever the MSB bit is because MSB is considered as a sign bit. So the number though you are shifting the right, but still the sign will be retained like it is still negative number. So that's why again I repeat in arithmetic right shift what happens is if you have this kind of number, and if you have this kind of number, let's say this kind of number, in both cases, you are performing two times shift. Let's put this one just uh, same number, but 0, 1, 1, 1, like that. In first case, what happens here? In this case, what happens is this 0, 1 will occupy here. But here vacant positions will be occupied by whatever the MSB bit is. So what is MSB bit here? One. So this vacant positions are occupied with that MSB. Now in this case, in this case, what happens? The second case, this is the first case. Second case, what happens? Zero, one will be uh, moved here. This position. Twice it is moving. Now this one we are going to lose and this one also we are going to lose. This one will come here, sit. And this zero will be sitting here. But the vacant position uh, will be filled with the MSB. Na? What is MSB? Zero. So that is zero. Whereas in case of normal right shift, in both cases, in the first case also, in the second case also, MSB, that those vacant positions are filled with the zeros. Zero. Here also, it is zero, zero. Making sense or not? Yes, sir. That's how the arithmetic right shift and uh, normal right shift uh, have the differences. But left shift will not have any uh, uh, left shift and arithmetic left shift, they will not have any differences. So you have uh, some number like this uh, and you are performing twice here uh, uh, left shift and the same number you have 1010, one, zero, one, zero, but you are performing arithmetic left shift here like this. In in these two cases here, this one zero will be shifted here to the MSP and the, this vacant is filled with zeros. And in this case also, uh, that is in arithmetic left shift also, this one zero will be shifted here. These vacant positions are filled with the zeros. That's all. They, they do not have any difference. So now coming to the concatenation operator, concatenation operator. So you have one operator, A and you have one operator B. You wanted to combine them together and you wanted to assign to a another operator, uh, upper end Y. Let's say A is of size one bit, whereas B is also of size one bit. What you wanted to do, you wanted to combine these together and you wanted to assign Y. Then Y must be of what size? One bit. Huh? one bit only, sir. Are Baba, listen, uh, everybody. You have A, which is holding a capability of one bit. It can hold one bit means a zero or one. Any one bit it can hold at a given time. B is capable of holding one bit. One bit means either zero or one. Now what we wanted to do, we wanted to combine uh, this A and B and we wanted to assign to Y. In such case, what must be the size of this Y? Two bits. Two bit. So it, this is a one scalar. B is also one scalar, but Y must be of vector type. It cannot be a scalar type. It must be a vector type. Now how do we, we actually do that? Uh, activity like uh, you know clubbing this uh, or you know combining this A and B 
that is with the help of concatenation operator so like y y equal to like concat open the this uh, braces a comma b now what happens is they, they've been uh, clubbed together and we are assigning it to one so in that in such cases what is the care needs to be taken this target must be meeting the required size otherwise there is no uh, point of uh, you know concatenating this two like that size means as somebody answered it it is one bit for example why why is happens to be one bit you are clubbing a and you are uh, with the b with the help of this concatenation operator whereas a is of uh, size one bit b is of size one bit but y is also as somebody an, uh, answered earlier is one bit then what happens is b whatever value is there na b so that will be assigned to the y because y capacity is to hold only so as somebody answered one bit only so this msb is uh, discarded in such case so you are thinking that i clubbed them i concatenated them <coughs> and assigned to y <laughs> But you are you will not be getting the expected output because of your own mistake. You are, you are not taking care of the size of the target side. Understanding? Yes, sir. So now you have the replication operator. See the replication operator, see the concatenation operator. Both seem to be same. So this is one, uh, one uh, brace and the another brace is surrounded like this. So it means what? Let's say there is a variable A. You want this to be, uh, you know, five times you want in some other variable. You wanted to assign this to Y, but five times of that A, the same A value, five, but five times. So in that case, we cannot, uh, we can do this way, five times like this, like this, five times, because we just have to concatenate, na? one time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. But that is somewhat verbose here. So we can avoid that with the help of this replication operator. Like I need five times, put here A and close this base. So now you don't need to do this way. You can do it this way. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So this conditional anyway, last session also, uh, I mean, la just last session we have seen this uh, with the demonstration. We did one example also. So that's how it is. Um, uh, so done, that is, this knowledge is essential to do uh, uh, two things. One thing is this, all this, uh, you know, operator's knowledge is very much important to do uh, at two levels one level is uh, you require to do uh, i mean you require that knowledge when you are doing in uh, something in data flow modeling or if you are doing with the behavioral modeling at that time also that is required so when you are doing these two kind of modeling uh, styles, then the those operator knowledge is essential. Without operators, no, uh, the, you cannot do uh, you know high level coding. This is uh, you know high level coding. Behavioral level modeling is higher abstraction level. As uh, I told uh, you know there are several abstraction levels in the past I discussed. So higher abstraction is behavioral modeling. That is, uh, for to do that, we must process this uh, operator's knowledge. So now what we do is, we will go back to our examples here. Now take a look at this one, everybody. Uh, this HA and this the TV, this bench. So here, if you uh, take a look at this one, you have HA, uh, this, uh, you know, this is how you have. Can someone uh, answer which type of modeling it is? Get level. Hmm? Get level. 
Gate level. Oh, gate level. What is essential is syntax. How to use the gates? The syntax knowledge is essential. Like you cannot put these variables the way you wish. So what is essential here is first output variable will come and then followed by that input variables will come. That knowledge is required. And you also require to have this keywords knowledge, like what keywords are available, these primitives, we technically call them primitive. That knowledge is required. Let's say the same thing when we are trying to model in a, uh, what we call uh, data flow level modeling here. So in this data flow level modeling here, we this is primarily same. This this you know module definition is same, input output definition is same. Only thing is this portion where you have defined the logic. So that is different. So how that is different? Uh, that also you know last session we have conducted that is using the assign key. Assign. Yes, and then we have to assign to some. And then we need to know the operator how to use okay. to perform that XOR operation. Just now, uh, today also we have seen this is the <laughs> operator that is to do this, uh, you know, uh, XOR operation. And the same thing applies even with this assign uh, and get assign. And then we remove this one. And to see, oh, we have to assign here uh, this uh, A ampersand B. A ampersand P. So that's how this is the data flow. This has become now the data flow. Now, uh, what happens, uh, like uh, if you wanted to do the other way, that is behavioral modeling. Today we are introducing you to the behavioral modeling. So in the behavioral modeling here, what we do here is, we don't use this to here, <coughs> We use something called always. This is a procedural uh, block, always. So always is a keyword. This is called procedural uh, uh, block, always. We have another procedural block that is initial, initial. This usage you have seen in test benches we have used. So, so far, several test benches you people have seen. In those several test benches, we have used initial. And today, we are use, introducing another procedural block that is always. Always is also a keyword like uh, your module is a keyword, your input is a keyword, your output is a keyword. And uh, this your end module is a keyword. <laughs> so like that. Now you are going to have here at the rate, this at the rate is called, uh, this is the event control operator. What, what is this? What is this? Event control operator. This at the rate is your event control operator. So here, mm, this one, this at the rate, this, this at the rate is a what it is event event control operator now what is the uh, syntax here is always we have used this always at the rate now <laughs> You can put here for all combinational design, asterisk you can put, star you can put. This star, one, this is one way of doing. The second way is you can have always at the rate, open the parenthesis, put the asterisk inside that. That is the second way of doing. The third way of doing is, always at the rate a comma b that is the third way of doing so in both three cases what is happening here is exclusively here in the third case what is happening here is uh, whenever 
A is changing, this block, always block will be triggered. Or any changes are taking place to B, then also always block is triggered. Always block will have like initial was having, you, you people have seen in the past in test benches, initial, we were having this multiple statements. So begin and end, right? Here, multiple statements, right? So likewise, uh, for always also, if one statement is there, begin and end is not required. If multiple statements uh, you are going to have, then begin and end is required. So whatever you keep here, maybe single statement or maybe multiple statements like this, whenever A is experiencing changes like 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 or x to 0 or 0 to x uh, uh, or uh, x to 1 or uh, 1 to x, any changes that are taking place <laughs> at that time, this block will be triggered. Making sense understanding? Yes, sir. So this same role is done with this asterisk also here because we are going to write inside here. Now, let's say we are going to put here uh, inside this always uh, uh, what we are going to put. Let's say we are going to put here A and uh, that is some A, A XOR with B. That is one thing. And the CO uh, is assigned with the A ampersand B that we are going to put. Now the right hand side, this uh, right hand side, whatever is there, na, if they are uh, experiencing any change, then though you are not mentioning here, uh, all of this right hand side, those uh, contributing to any uh, changes here, they are included in, in the list here like this. Implicitly, this is called explicit way of writing. You are writing here explicitly here. Implicitly here it is like that. So how it is actually including them here? These are the right hand side. These are this, this is the target sum and CO are the target side. These are the right hand side. These are the source side. Are dri driving. Whatever the signals are driving. This is sum and CO are driven. They are driven, driven by this drivers, A, B drivers, who are driving A and B are driving. Whatever the signals are driving the uh, this uh, target, they are actually included in this sensitivity list. This area is called sensitivity list. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Sensitivity list. So the, what is this area is called this area? Anyone? What is I'm this area is called? We define. What is this area is called? I don't know. Sir. Like this means, huh? Instantiation. No, no, wrong. So no one is really bothering about the, the time that we are spending. This is the port list area. How many times I told? This is the port list area. This this area is called. Port declaration. Uh, declaration area that is port list area this is declaration area and this area is called sensitivity list sensitivity list so remember all this if you are not remembering then you are actually wasting time you are yours and mine so understand that in behavioral modeling, again, I, I repeat this, in behavioral modeling, what we use is always we use, always is a keyword. This is first, first thing is a, it is a very long keyword. Second thing is a, this is called a procedural block. How many procedural blocks we have means in very long two procedural blocks are there. What are they means? One is always, the other is mm, initial. 
only within the always or only within the initial we can use for loop repeat loop uh, like that uh, conditions uh, if condition case uh, all such usage is possible within the always only or within the initial only what are uh, these always and initial they are procedural blocks Further, what are they means? They are very large keywords. <laughs> Initial is used in test benches only. In test benches. Whereas, always is used in designs. Designs. This is what we are doing in the design now. I repeat again all this. You have The purpose of repeating repetition is to to strike in your mind. So you have to remember all this. Uh, repeating again and again, you people are forgetting. This one, what is this one? Port list. Uh, port list. Uh, this, what is this one? Declaration. Uh, declaration. And uh, here, what is what is this area? This area? Sensitivity list. Uh, this is sensitivity list and what is this at the rate hmm event control operator earlier we had seen in the test benches in the initial we had seen usage of this hash what is this hash means it is a delay control operator what it is Delay control operator. Delay. Uh, so this hash is called delay control operator. What is event control operator? At the rate. Uh, in the very log, at the rate is the event control operator. Just beside this, at the rate, what whatever is the what is, what it is called? Sensitivity list. Uh, okay. So <laughs> and uh, what is always? Keyword. Uh, apart from key, uh, keyword, what it is? Apart from key, uh, keyword, what it is? Procedural block. Uh, procedural block. Inside that, all the statements uh, we can use, such as uh, your loops we can use. Your if conditions we can use, your case we can use. So multiple uh, all, uh, procedural blocks are there means here one uh, we can have in within the module and end module, we can have multiple always statements. You, you, you This is one always. Down the line somewhere, let's say one more always. Down the line somewhere, let us say one more always. All these are blocks are parallelly executed. They are parallelly executed. Parallelly. But inside this uh, blocks, sequential. Inside this procedural block, sequential. Understand? Yes, sir. And these statements under procedural state uh, block, whatever you have under this procedural block, whatever the statements you have, those are called procedural procedural statements. Those are called procedural. Okay. Mm. Procedural statements. Mm. So this knowledge is required before we explore that uh, what we do there. Okay. With that said, now let us proceed to this one uh, here. Uh, as I told, you can you can put here only the star, or you can put here uh, uh, this one always. Uh, uh, within the parenthesis, you can put here, within the always at the rate, within the parenthesis, you can put that uh, uh, asterisk. Uh, you also can put here like this, always at the rate, open the parenthesis, A, comma B. E, this is sensitivity list. 
what for what what signals your your block if you see this block diagram if you see your block diagram you have this is your block diagram of this ha half adder has got this kind of block diagram you have inputs and you have outputs you are sum and carry out here and uh, you have your inputs here that is your uh, a and your b this block ha is sensitive to your a and b if you if you are uh, a b changing to from 0 0 to 0 1 or 1 0 or 1 1 for for every change it is going to uh, uh, you know give different outputs here so it means this block is sensitive to this a and b so that's why in the sensitivity list only those variables will come for which you are your block is sensitive that your hardware is sensitive what signals are driving what signals are driving and these are driven signals these driven signals are all the time target side so remember all that so all this is permissible this is permissible this is permissible and this is also permissible so now what we are going to do here is mm, we Sir, uh... huh. Also, we also have a uh, uh, and reset even speed after always when we are using flip flops. No, sir. Uh -huh. That so is whatever code that we keep inside, it, it's only executed when clock or reset is changed, or is it executed all the time? Uh -huh. that, uh, that is, uh, you, that, that for that we have time. Because we our discussion is at the at the beginning level. We have circuits like uh, you have circuits like a combinational logic circuits are there. Second, you have sequential logic circuits are there, and uh, you also have FSM finite state machines. This finite state machine includes one and two. These two circuits, combinational and sequential logic, both will be included in FSM, finite state machine. So in your sequential logic, in your FSM, you will uh, have to do with the signals such as clock, such as the reset. This clock, again, may be, uh, you know, positive edge. Uh, it may be at positive edge. It may be at negative edge. And this reset may be, again, too. It may be your active high reset or it may be your uh, active low reset. <laughs> so those those issues will be discussed as we progress uh, further in our sessions. Those topics will come at this stage, sequential logic. But for now, students... Uh, the other two guys here, uh, this uh, Rafe and Mizwa, they uh, they have nil uh, knowledge about the very large HDL because they are second years, and uh, you are already you have already studied Maitri, so that's why you possess this knowledge. So these things uh, for to cover, you have to wait. Yes, sir. So. And they, we are trying to bring everyone, every participant here onto the common platform in the month of July. This By the end of this July month, every one of you, uh, the one who already studied the very long and the one who not studied the very long, they must be having the same understanding about the language. That's the task in the by the end of this July month. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Are you, no one responding. Okay, sir. No, no, Maitri, especially. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So those things will come here. Uh, positive edge clock, negative edge clock. How we handle them? How we handle the reset? How we actually we build a sequential logic? Among sequ in sequential logic, there are again innumerable uh, circuits are there. We have. Uh, starting with uh, <laughs> your flip flop, uh, you have uh, you know ca counters are there. Again, uh, in counters there are several counters: up counter, down counter, uh, up down counter, 
uh, there are several uh, again re registers are there right, uh, left uh, left shift register right shift register universal shift register uh, there are several sequential logic innumerable that's why i said innumerable sequential logics are there all of those things will be discussed in sub subsequent sessions so how um, you have to wait till that but for now our agenda is to understand this uh, always usage and uh, with the help of behavioral uh, modeling our main agenda uh, of today's session is uh, to cover this uh, introduction to behavioral modeling that is the agenda so we are about to finish that one we are very close now uh, we are very close in, in you know starting point of uh, not end point so because uh, few more uh, uh, days we have to spend with this uh, combinational logic because in combinational again we have different uh, logic circuits i don't know how many of you can uh, do that for example priority encoder is there how many of you can do that how many of you can understand actually priority encoder <clears throat> the, so all those things are there all these are uh, uh, they fall under combinational logic so uh, that's why you know maybe one week is there anyway to spend with combination logic. So better you focus on this, uh, like these methods, like uh, these are the different ways we can we can uh, write here. And now coming to this one, uh, to complete this one, as I told here, uh, when we have multiple statements, what is required, I told, we require begin and end. If you have only one statement, then begin and end is not required. And then inside that, what we are going to write here is basically this this one only uh, without a sign here. That's all without a sign. Uh, here we will not be having this sign. That's why I told uh, in my current session uh, some minutes ago uh, that operators are mainly primarily used in behavioral modeling and in data flow modeling. So usage of these operators, operators, understanding of the operator is the, is the very, very, very important. So <coughs> that's all done. We are done with behavioral modeling. Our behavioral model is ready now. So here we don't need to possess the knowledge of uh, any uh, gates. So uh, our behavioral model is anyway ready. So this is called the behavioral modeling. So what you have done, see, uh, module is same in any level of modeling, like module, module name, and port list uh, is same. Type declaration is same in any kind of modeling. Only the thing is here, how you write the logic, that is what the, uh, you know, uh, different thing. In, in case of here, uh, in case of here, uh, this one, data flow level modeling, we have used assign keyword, that's all and the operator here. Whereas in case of uh, this one here in a gate level modeling, primitives we have used, keywords that are there. But the uh, key point here is how to use them, that syntax is uh, required here. Otherwise we'll mess up everything. And now coming to here, this always, here always is the a key here. In a behavioral modeling, what is key? Always is the key. And then at the rate, this event control operator is the key then here what signals are going to drive the uh, you know our module those we have to include in the event control uh, uh, this is the list uh, sensitivity list in the sensitivity list we have to include only those signals those signals drive uh, the our uh, model so here a b they drive the model that is half half adder model uh, the, uh, how, what are the ways to include? Either you can put directly asterisk like this, or you can put in parentheses, so that is also allowed. And you can put here, <coughs> separating them in comma, that is also allowed. And then if multiple statements are there, this begin and end is required. And then you put them here like this. That is uh, just, uh, you know, the expressions that you put them. So you have done. Now, can we use the same test bench here? is another thing that most of the students will have uh, uh, doubt. Are bhai, now we have changed this one. Uh, you know, the code being changed from this, uh, uh, what we call gate level to a behavioral model. Can I still work with this uh, test bench? Answer is yes, you can still work with this te same test bench. 
Why? Because you have to understand that these are the concepts that you have to understand. Why? Because the model name is still same. See, see here, this, we did not change anything. We only have changed the, uh, you know, the logic, how you write that we have changed. Logic also we did not change, by the way. We have changed the method, how to write the logic, that method we have changed. That method from uh, this, what we call gate level to this behavioral, uh, behavioral modeling we have gone. That's all. Logic remains same. That is half adder only. Making sense, understanding. Yes, sir. So there, very quickly, let us do the another exercise. This exercise, anyway, I, I'm going to share the video. You can pause it uh, at this point and you can copy down this uh, thing and you, you can run using the same test bench. The same test bench is with you. So let's very quickly run to the another, uh, another design example and with that we will stop today's session so another example let's say we are going to mux here so mux let us open this design and the test bench here both open here so you have opened now so now if you <laughs> look at this mux <laughs> take a close look of this mux uh, so what is the style being written here gate level yes that is the gate level so now what is required is we have to write using the behavioral modeling. So just copy this same because we are not going to change, uh, uh, you know, uh, interface. The top level interface is same. That is this interface uh, here. This uh, top level module, uh, this module and the type declaration is same and end module is same that we are not going to change. Only we are going to change this inter inside this one. So what is required here is, how do we start again? I am asking you, please tell, always is required. Always. Okay. Now at the raid, now tell me what signals may be driving this MUX? Yes. So you have got uh, your MUX uh, here this way. You Your MUX, your MUX is this. You have A input, you have B input, and you also have got your S input. This is your A, this is your B, this is your S, and this is your Y. Now tell me to this MUX 2 by 1, what signals are driving? A, B, and S. My three. Is she there? Yes. Is she yes, there? Sir. A, B, and S. Huh. So you got the point now. Driving signals means you got the point. So <laughs> let's put them here. A, comma, B, comma, yes. So you got the point. That's why I'm putting here. Now, I need, whether I need begin and end or not, that depends on what I am going to do, actually. For example, if I am using here, uh, this, this Y, yes, question mark, and then B colon A. So, this, this one, this one is only one statement. Line number six is only one statement which is using your conditional operator, which is using your conditional operator, which is question mark and a colon, or also called as ternary operator. So that is using this question mark and operator, only one statement, this is only one statement, you are done. You are done with your logic description. You have written your, uh, you know, max. So now can I use <laughs> the same test bench? What is your answer, Maitri? Sir, can you repeat? I cannot repeat. You must be attentive. Already I told. Can I just change my description style here? From, from from this gate level to behavioral modeling, can I still yes. use my this same test bench? No, sir. No, very good. Uh, Mizba, can I use? Yes. 
that fellow is uh, sleeping or I don't know, very slow, low wise. <laughs> he needs milk uh, something. Uh, Rafe? We can use same, sir. Why? Because uh, only the circuit is same. Uh, circuit is same is not the answer. You have to understand the concept. Here, this module name yes, did not touch. Yes. Uh, the module name, if at all you are changing, let's say you are you are changing to some U, 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 you have your max 2 by 1, triple U. Can I use the same test bench, means? Yes, you can use the same test bench, but with a care that where you are instantiating, instantiate with that module name. Okay. Yes, sir. To everyone, Maitri, uh, that uh, Mizba and Rafe, I am telling you again, Maitri, you are not serious, very bad. And uh, Mizba, you are, uh, you need some energy booster. Uh, listen carefully. You are actually spoiling my time. Please don't do that. Listen carefully. I repeat this again. Here, here, look at this. Uh, take a closer look at this. This is, uh, uh, what is this logic basically, Maitri? Gate level, sir. Are, yaar, what is this logic? Well, for what for this logic is? Uh, for max two by one. Huh. Uh, so this this one. This is also for the same, but name is different. Not name is different. Not not name is different. The method description method is different. The, first yes, of all, description yes. method is different. Now, now, can I use the same test bench? Means you said no, that is very wrong. Yes, we can use the same test bench because this test bench logic is written to test the MUX, but with only one care that we have to ensure that where we are instantiating the module, that module name must be same in case you, you, you might have changed the description style, sir. But in case if you have changed the module name also, then see that in the same test bench, you are using that proper changed module name. That must be the answer for everyone I'm telling. Is that making sense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. So understand, don't do mistakes. Get the concepts. So you have to answer like this. So I hope that is clear. Okay, now what we do is with this we we'll stop our session. But uh, uh, you people uh, tomorrow have to run the same test bench <coughs> for all of the designs uh, because all our combination logic and the, you know you know uh, the operators usage how to use that operator you got to know. So the remaining logic means what I mean is remaining logic here. If I go back here, I today session I demonstrated half adder max over. So you people have to complete uh, this full adder. Full adder is not here. Full adder you have to complete. That is the additional thing. Anyway, this two you have to simulate uh, using behavioral level modeling that uh, the design done. Apart from this two, you also be completing full adder design. One bit full adder. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay then. Uh,